Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my hand I will sing of the goodness of God
Welcome to your cathedral on this uh, absolutely wonderful day, very historic day. The weather's being kind to us. Uh, Bishop Cameron will offer the formal welcome to our dignitaries, but we thank them for being present on this very special day. My job is to welcome you to your cathedral, to say it's wonderful that you're here with us. Welcome to those who are joining us on YouTube, across the diocese, and way, way beyond there. When it comes to communion today, there'll be uh, five communion stations. There'll be two here on the red carpet area, one in each of the transepts, and one in the narthex. Uh, and there'll be people to guide you uh, so that you can have a beautiful experience. I invite you over the next few minutes to uh, join Bishop Jeremy in prayer as we prepare for this uh, great event in the life of our diocese and as we all prepare to meet the crucified and risen one as we break the bread together and break open the word. Once again, it's great that you're here with us. I shall go unto the altar of God even unto the God of my joy and gladness.
Please be seated. Nuriba Bing, Nambale Karumba, Nuru, Bai Beren, Mahanya Nyali. Our most great high, bless us and touch us all here today. Yawa Nambali Nunyu Nyubu Marumba Wan Karumba Yarigo Nya Balkaliba Nambali Nya Governor Nya VIPs Nambali O Wanyari Marumba Hello, good morning everyone. It's an honour to do the welcome to country for this highly significant occasion. I'm happy to be here and to speak and represent Yagura people, my ancestors, elders, and those who've gone before us. Nali Dagu Waraba, Muganjan Muganba. We gather at Brisbane, place of the tulip wood tree, now called Brisbane. Nyao Nyari Ba Gamingan. Ganya Dago Wanyari Galawagu Da Yakari. I acknowledge our ancestors who cared for Muganjan for thousands of years, our old ones before us, and elders present Guri, First Nations, Torres Strait Islanders, and Dugais, non Indigenous. I acknowledge my um, First Nations sisters and brothers here today. I'm an elder, I'm a Yagura person and a Gabi Gabi person and part of Kwandamooka as well. My tribal groups include Gurugum from around Muganjan, Gunpul and Jandawal from Buriga, Moreton Bay, Cherangeri, Stradbroke Island, and Mujanbara from West Yagura. I was raised in the Anglican faith and all my school years on Stradbroke Island, attended that tiny little church at Dunwich on the hill, which prepared us for a stable uh, spiritual life later. Uh, and when we moved to Brisbane, we joined the AIM. My great-grandfather was the final letter stick or message stick bearer of Yagara country and also spiritual leader, and much old knowledge is transferred to his family. He spent five decades incarcerated under the Aboriginal Protection Act on several reservations. There was one uh, time at Baramba when he was, um, it already had his family, my grandfather and others, and a new clergyman arrived at Baramba, it was called then, which is now Sherberg. And um, he had heard how Grandfather Mukan, my great-grandfather, could speak many Aboriginal languages. And so he approached him to help translate the word to others in his Bible classes. And Grandfather agreed, and over time, he could hear the Guri culture in stories of the Bible. And through listening to Ezekiel 37.15 about letter sticks or message sticks, took his interest. And so reciprocity being one of our cultural pillars, he put it to the clergyman that they both engage on a course of scripture readings each day and he would teach him our spirituality and culture and learn about the new spirituality and culture. So they did this and each day also they got into kings, chronicles, prophets. One read, the other listened. My great grandfather listened and memorized each day. Each day they reread, repeated and rehearsed 
reflected on, discussed, and eventually my great-grandfather did uh, convert to Christianity. And from this strong faith, which he incorporated within a Guri cultural framework, uh, um, he, he brought a <coughs> great strength into our tribe. My, grandfather, my grandmother also, who lived through great hardship and whose mother was one of the few remaining from her tribe after massacres in North Queensland around Maggieville and outside of Normanton, she also um, was part of the Anglican Church at Dunwich and did her confirmation there and we also have photos of her with visiting um, church leaders and with the Agnew family who, who organised it. So having said that, I just want to say that um, it is an it um, honour to be here. It's an honour to also speak um, from a place of Guri spirituality and to be a First Nations person, to be a speaker at this important event. So I'd like to close on a blessing. Nuriba Bing Nyindan Nyindana Marumba Wunya Waganyiba Balkaliba Nali Beren. Our Most High bless us all and be welcome everyone. Our your spirit. Nariba bing wanya waganyi ba noru tukulawa nariba manyal. Be in all of our hearts. May your spirit fill us. Karumba na tukulawan niaba marumba marnali ba kubagulabo. Be welcome here on behalf of Guri Nation and be filled forever with our. Most High Spirit. Bibalka, Bibalka, Numberly. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. Mina Kapogiga, Kapo Batanga Murangal Pena Garwidam is a Nabi brother and Maggi brother and no. Like my Esomani, Kukul Maipa, in an Alpan Zagat, Nobepa. In a name, brother Lawa in a Tanaman Koda, Daimo by God, brother Ninga Pakapa Azas, Lakmura Mabagal Naya Musumabagal, Zenat Kes, Torres Strait or Kawal, I lack him up a puddies, and it amulpalak, it Iawal Mama in Mura, Matakari in Kitati, Ningamuniga like. And we will give you a zagat and mirede in a nabi, my gear angane, Senabi malu dadal a daudai, nabi pogoba gizuno. So, good morning to you all. Just a brief translation of my KKY. I welcome you all here this morning and also acknowledging this is an Aboriginal land. I am a Torres Strait Islander, acknowledging them and acknowledging my sister Carrie. And for all of us here in this space, in this holy ground, on behalf of myself and my community from Zenat Kes, Torres Strait Island, we welcome and we also welcome the new Archbishop going to be enthroned shortly. And all of us, people of God, so. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Friends, the Lord be with you. I'd echo the words of welcome from Gaja Kerry and Auntie Rose. Particularly warm welcome to Her Excellency Dr. Jeanette Young. It's a joy to have you with us. 
Welcome also to those representatives of local government and the Lord Mayor and representatives of the state government. Welcome to faith leaders and to ecumenical guests, to bishops and friends who've traveled from other dioceses. It is a joy to be here. And a particularly warm welcome to, to Jeremy's family, those who live here already, and those who have traveled from the cooler climes of Adelaide. We thought we'd put on a warm welcome for you so that you could feel right at home. This is the day that the Lord has made. We do rejoice and we're glad. And this is a service in some ways unlike any other. I was conscious that as I came in, the doors closed behind me. That's never a good sign. <laughs> but on this occasion, it was planned. And so as we process down, I invite you to turn. And uh, I do believe there's, there are doors to be opened and a person to be welcomed. So as we process down, please turn and witness this new thing. Let the doors be opened. We greet you in the name of Christ. Who are you and why do you request entry? I am Jeremy, servant of Jesus Christ and I come as one seeking the grace of God to travel with you in God's service together. Why have you been sent to us? I am sent as Archbishop to serve you, to proclaim the love of Christ, and with you to worship and love God with heart and soul, mind and strength. How do you come among us and with what confidence? I come despite my fears, trusting in the love of God, knowing that the Christ walks beside me and the Spirit surrounds me with grace to give me courage. Let us then humble ourselves before God and together seek God's mercy and strength. Jeremy, Karilko Beren Nunyu Ko. Nuriba Bing Wunyo Waganyiba. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, the Most High be in your heart. Marumba Baron Balkari 
be welcome here, be welcome Yagura Jaurana on Yagura country. Balkari Marumba Noro Kavulugo, be safe, be welcome, be blessed. Jesu Tugulavanya Kubagulaba, Jesus in your heart forever. Nuru, blessings. Itati, Jeremy, I like your pal, Missy Nabi Batanga, Uzuma Begal, Itatabi Gatano, Ninuzaget Palamunang, and Yepe Saman in Kulai, and Yuni Galai, and Yuni Mam, the Mumabekapa, Naka Esang Yepa, Inabi Gipa, Kazikata Paupa, Ninuzaget Palamun Mabaya. I welcome you, Bishop Jeremy, as a friend of our Torres Strait Islands, far between Papua New Guinea and Australia. We welcome you and we, we praise God for your ministry amongst our people, your love and your care. Yes, so. Jeremy, Bishop in the Church of God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and the people of the Anglican Church, Southern Queensland, we welcome you afresh to your Cathedral Church. In the name of the Lord, we welcome you, we welcome you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Cameron, Cameron Bishop, Bishop Administrator, Administrator of the Diocese of Brisbane, we present to you Jeremy David Greaves, whom God has ordained to be a shepherd and servant, and who now has been chosen as Bishop of this Diocese and Metropolitan of this province to be recognised, installed and seated in the cathedral, which is the symbol of that office. Before we proceed, we must be assured by the appointed representatives of the Diocese of Brisbane and the province of Queensland that Jeremy will be received as their duly elected Archbishop. I certify that Jeremy David Greaves was duly elected Archbishop of Brisbane by the Archbishop Election Committee on the 26th day of August 2023. I certify that the bishops of the province of Queensland have confirmed the election of Jeremy David Greaves as Archbishop of Brisbane. Thank you. 
Let the will of the people here present be made known. Do you recognise and receive Jeremy as your Archbishop? Yes. Will you uphold Jeremy in this ministry? Yes. My brother, you have been recognised as Bishop of this diocese. Therefore, I, Cameron Venables, by the authority committed to me, and with the consent of those who have chosen you, do invest you, Jeremy David Greaves, as Archbishop of Brisbane, with all the temporal and spiritual rights and responsibilities that pertain to that office. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jeremy, carry this staff as a sign of your care for us in Christ, the chief shepherd of us all. Remember the words spoken to you at your consecration. Encourage the faithful, support the weak, heal the sick, bind up the broken, restore the outcast, seek the lost, be merciful without being remiss, administer discipline with mercy, and may the Lord be your shepherd at all times. Amen. I, Jeremy, Bishop in the Church of God, now duly invested and acknowledged as Archbishop of Brisbane, receive this pastoral staff as a token of my jurisdiction and of your recognition, and do solemnly promise that I will observe and to the utmost of my power fulfill the responsibilities and obligations of this office, striving in all things to be a faithful shepherd to the flock of Christ, so that we may be equipped for God's service and together build up the body of Christ. So help me God. In the name of the chapter of this cathedral church and on behalf of the people of this diocese, I install you, Jeremy, in the cathedral, the seat appointed to your office. May the Lord stir up in you the flame of love and the power of faith that transforms the world. Amen. 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 May the Lord sustain you in all your works and in all your ways, make you humble, just and true, strengthen you in holiness and righteousness, fill your home with love, joy and peace, and help you always to possess the hearts of your people. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. who have been baptised are called to study the Bible, to take part in the life of the church and to share in the Holy Communion, and to pray faithfully and regularly. We are called to share with others by word and example the love of Christ 
and the gospel of reconciliation and hope. We are called to love our neighbours as ourselves, to honour all people, and to pray and work for peace and justice. I invite all of you to commit yourselves anew to this calling. Jeremy, receive this cross as the symbol of your leadership and service in the province of Queensland. May God bless you in your ministry among us and enable you to take up your cross daily and follow Christ. Amen. Friends in Christ, it gives me great joy to present to you Jeremy, Archbishop of Brisbane.
Let us pray. Merciful and intimate God, who gave John of the cross strength of purpose and faith that sustained him even through the dark night of the soul, shed your light on all who love you, in unity with Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book, The Wisdom of Solomon. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble, they will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faith will, will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. Hear the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Hear the word of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets.
for the Gospel of the Lord. May these words be spoken and heard in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please be seated? Who are you working for? It's a question that came from my spiritual director a number of years ago, and so I began the list. Well, obviously, the Archbishop, the Regional Bishop, the Wardens, the Parish Council, the Strategic Plan, the Music Director, the Mother's Union, the Youth Leader. And he followed up with, who are you actually working for? I was brought up a bit short and breathed deeply. If I'm honest, I said, I'm probably working for myself. And there was an uncomfortable pause and he looked me in the eye and he said, so how's that working out for you? <laughs> and while I struggled to find an answer, he followed up with, what might it look like if you worked for God? It's the sort of uncomfortable question that the best spiritual directors know just when to drop into a conversation. The sort of question that pulls you up short and invites you into a place that is both incredibly uncomfortable and deeply confronting at the same time. What might it look like if you worked for God? It's a question that brings me back to the core of my faith because if I actually believe all of the stuff I write and preach and teach about God, then working for that God is very different to working for all those others. What might it look like to work for the God who searches out the small, the lost, the one, the unlikely? The God who is with us even in the valley of the shadow of death, the God who is light even in the darkest night, who welcomes tax collectors and sinners who is wasteful with love even when we are wasteful with the gifts we've been given. What does it look like to work for a God who says, even when you are poor, you are blessed. Even when you are hungry, you are blessed. When you are weeping and hated and reviled and excluded, you are blessed even then. What does it look like to work for the God whose story is one of hope rather than of fear? Who says, even in the darkest place you are blessed and there is cause for rejoicing. And of course we all know what darkness looks like and feels like. They're victim survivors who still feel unheard, women who still feel marginalized, 
the LGBTIQ plus community who still feel unwelcome, First Nations people, faithful Christians whose only experience of the church is the experience of decline, who've watched as their friends and children and grandchildren have drifted away from the church, if not the faith, clergy who feel tired and anxious and burnt out. We know what darkness feels like. I know what darkness feels like. The darkness of trying to make sense of my experience of abuse as a child, of wrestling at times with mental health issues, of being public property in the media, of second-guessing decisions of worrying about the world and the church my children and grandchildren might inherit, wondering where God might be in amongst all of that, and praying fervently that prayer of Desmond Tutu, God, I know you're in control. I just wish you'd make it a bit more obvious. And it seems to me that Sitting in the dark, there are two possible stories that play out more clearly there than in any other place. There's a story about fear and a story about hope. As Anne Lamott wrote, hope begins in the dark. The stubborn hope that if you just show up and try to do the right thing, the dawn will come. You watch and you wait, and you work, you don't give up. John of the Cross, whose feast day we remember today, knew all about darkness. John, who was dissatisfied with the way things were and sought to bring change and reformation to the Carmelite order. John, who is best known outside of Spain for his dark night of the soul also knew that it's in the darkness that we can truly know God. One of the central functions of the dark night, says John, is to remind us that when everything else is uncertain, all we can do is trust in the God who is there even when the light is gone. It's not always an easy thing to do. And we know this as a church, we know it as a diocese. While we experiment with new ways of organizing ourselves, experiment with new ways of worship, new music and all sorts of other things, mostly we know that the problems run deeper than that. For so many people, the old ways of being Christian are not working anymore not even for those who are old themselves. Something has died, and yet at the same time, something is being born. John says, God puts out our lights to keep us safe because we're never more in danger of stumbling than when we think we know where we're going when we can no longer see the path we're on, when we can no longer read the maps we've brought with us or sense anything in the dark that might tell us where we are, it's then that we're open to God's love and protection. If a person wishes to be sure of the road they tread on, they need to close their eyes, he says, and walk in the dark. Or as Barbara Brown Taylor says, at the heart of the faith is learning to walk in the dark. And it seems to me that this is where we can find hope. And yet so much of our lives is ruled and driven by fear. It seems to me that it was fear that drove the result of the referendum this year. Fear that drives so much foreign policy, asylum seeker policy, economic and finance policies. 
And the same is true in the church. We're so often driven by fear. Fear about decline, fear about finances, about relevance or popularity or orthodoxy or purity. Fear about so many things. Fear is the place of grasping. Grasping after certainty and security and surety and safety. It's the place of building higher walls and clearer boundaries, of closed fists rather than open hands, of closed hearts rather than open ones. Fear is the place where we become convinced that God is absent, and so we fill that God-shaped hole with our own striving, our own doing, our own golden calves. The alternative in the midst of the dark is to live out of a place of hope. What might it look like to work for the God who invites hope? The great 20th century theologian Jürgen Moltmann thought hope needed to be anchored in the realities of life, in the dark as well as the light. He said that this is because Christian hope is able to see the hope of resurrection within all the realities of life. Hope bursting at the seams, moving us forwards towards God's promise. Hope, he says, is the Christian lens for perceiving reality, even in the darkness. Christian hope marked by Christ's resurrection compels us to see the world differently. We can no longer afford to simply see sin or pain or frailty or darkness. Christian hope invites us to see possibility in everything. Nothing, not even the deepest darkness, is outside the possibility of transformation. And it seems to me that this season in our life together is pregnant with hope. So many new things are waiting to be born, things that we may never have imagined before. Ways of being together, ways of being church, of worshipping. And those things will only come about if we can move beyond fear. What might it look like? to work for the God of hope, of love, of freedom and possibility and joy. In his little book, Belonging, Peter Selby says that sometimes we may feel required to resist what seems to have no place in the promises of God. But mostly, he says, if the church's experience is anything to go by, we are more in danger of failing to recognize new beauty and new truth because it comes in unfamiliar guise. And sometimes, he says, and if we're like our earliest forebears in the faith, it will be quite often, we shall be aware of something that we can only describe in Paul's language as the pangs of childbirth a longing that something will soon be revealed. In the last verse of his final poem, John of the Cross writes of awakening to the possibility offered by the God of hope. He writes, How gently and lovingly you wake in my heart, where in secret you dwell alone, And in your sweet breathing, filled with good and glory, how tenderly you swell my heart with love. Charlie Bell, in England, recently reflected on some of the changes in the church there, and he wrote, There is a moment each morning as most of the world slumbers and the deep night seems to be all-pervasive, that a tiny, 
almost imperceptible dot of light can be just about glimpsed on the horizon. Slowly but surely, the hints of dawn make their presence known. Gently, yet increasingly convincingly, until the light warms and the day begins, and there is no going back. There is something, he said, on the horizon, and it heralds a new dawn that cannot be turned back. The ceiling has a crack in it, and grace is seeping through. God is on the move and is calling us to follow. So the invitation, perhaps, is to stop grasping Stop grasping for that next plan or solution and rest into that hope that comes with following this God who is on the move. And whether it's in a tiny congregation on a Sunday or an aged care center or a school, whether it's in the heart of Brisbane on a stinking hot day or in the furthest, most isolated community in remote Queensland, whether it's in the darkest night or the brightest dawn, If God in Christ is present with us, and stubbornly and deeply I believe that God is, there is hope. That invitation to participate again in what God is doing still in this tired world. From the depths of the darkest night, it's the dawn of everything, again and again and again. God breathes this new invitation each morning and in every new beginning in our lives. What does it look like to work for that God? It seems to me that we have a choice in this season of the life of the church. We can continue to bow down in fear before the many idols we've created, or we can help one another learn to walk in the dark. And then, because of the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to shine upon those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and will guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the ministry of the church and for Jeremy, our Archbishop. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God. We humbly pray that you will hear us, good Lord. Yena koi ku pal le rei dit na tie yi ku luak ku luang da wei bain dit ka je pio no wo ak tu ai je do du ne ping nam man cha mat ne luoi da wen du ye isu kreso bain dit ka je pio no wo ak heal the divisions of your church that all may be one so that the world may believe. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Lead the members of your church in their vocations and ministry, that they may serve you in true and godly livings. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. <laughs> A go will be at go will be at Nick, Nijur Ben, Bind it, Ping Long Da. Tion cake, Biggie, Ninia Quine. Pure the cake, no cool the pure. Which are the cake, Biggie Nin teed, no coiku, Kadia, Bind it, Ping Long Da. And inspire all bishop, priest, Deacon, with your love, that with all your people they may hunger for the truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Let your servant, Jeremy, call and now install as our Archbishop. Pour your grace upon him that he may faithfully fulfill the duties of. Archbishop, build up your church and glorify your name. Lord, hear our prayer. Moga keg, mukeg ne jong dun la jig, but tau bito, kuching, kuching ne kuching ne kei, keman, ke chol, kutau ke ne loy, chi cha lech, loy cha loy ke kanisa du. Who way a cake, big a gum, yallo, a good talk, bind it, ping long da. Eternal God. You have promised to hear those who pray in the name of your Son. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may obtain according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are the body of Christ. The, Spirit is the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. He taught your word with boldness and offered himself to you in perfect obedience. He cared for all as the good shepherd and laid down his life for the sheep. By his death and rising to new life, he brought new life to your people. In baptism, you have united us to him and brought us out of darkness into light. And now we give you thanks that in fulfillment of your promise, you pour out your spirit upon us, filling us with your gifts and leading us into all truth. You give us power to proclaim your gospel to all nations and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, with John of the cross and all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we do as our Saviour has commanded. 
proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your Spirit. Please be seated. <clears throat> Thanks for being here today. Welcome again to those who join us on YouTube. Uh, Francis Thompson is going to make our first presentation. Josie, would you like to come join us? Thank you, Francis. And before I give the Archbishop a chance to speak, just a couple of housekeeping things. One, firstly, to the bishops present, thank you for being here today. We need you to make your way directly to the high altar after the, this, the, we are dismissed so that you can be part of a photo. So please do not talk to anybody. Make your way directly and you'll be led by uh, Archbishop Emeritus Aspinall, who knows exactly how that works. <laughs> Thank you. And please do stay on for refreshments to enjoy this occasion. And now our Archbishop will say a few words. Thank you. I'm mindful of the heat. I'm also mindful that when I was made bishop, uh, the service was about three hours, and Thomas said, Dad, that's the longest church I've ever been to. So we're in under three hours, Thomas, so, so we're going well. Um, but just a couple of words of thanks before I let you uh, find somewhere cooler to be. Uh, thank you so much to Her Excellency, the Honourable Dr. Jeanette Young, uh, for being here with us, and Professor Graham Nimmo. Uh, the Honourable Grace Grace, um, I think, was going to be here. Uh, Councillor Vicky Howard, thank you for being here as well, uh, representing the Lord Mayor. Um, special thanks to the, uh, the Council for the donation uh, of about 50 trees. Um, there's a shortage in the nursery at the moment, um, but there's 50 trees somewhere in the cathedral, another addition to the communion forest project. So first in, first served, if you want to plant a tree uh, somewhere around the diocese uh, to remember today. Uh, thank you to the primate, uh, Archbishop Jeff Smith, and to the heads of uh, other churches in Brisbane and Br Brisbane City Church ministers. Um, Thank you for colleagues from around Australia for making the trip, and particularly uh, to Archbishop Leonard uh, from uh, the Anglican Church of Melanesia. Thank you for being here this morning. On a personal note, I want to thank uh, my family uh, for being here, uh, Josie and Kate and Thomas and Hannah. Mum, couldn't have kept her away, we tried. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, to Rosie and Zong and Suzanne for making the trip. Um, Samantha and Angela um, are stuck in Sydney, They're one of those uh, lots of people whose flight was cancelled. Uh, they said they'd watch the interesting bits on the live stream, so <laughs> thank you to them. Thank you to Andrew for making uh, the trip uh, out from England and bringing our grandfather's uh, pastoral staff with you. Um, that was the loud bang on the door at the beginning. Thank you to all those other friends who have traveled uh, from all sorts of places, a terrific cohort from Adelaide uh, and all around Australia. Uh, 
thank you to the Dean and uh, the Cathedral staff, the servers, the vergers, the musicians, the Flower Guild, all those people that work behind the scenes to make a service like this happen. I particularly want to thank this morning uh, Bishop Cameron Venables, the Bishop Administrator, Bishop for the Western Region, particularly for the way that he's led the diocese during his time as administrator. With, <laughs> he has worked with unfailing grace and courage and commitment done an incredible amount of hard work, juggling two roles, enormous distances, a synod, an election process, all while remaining a valued friend and a good colleague and an integral part of the team. Thank you also to Bishop John Roundhill, uh, Bishop Bill Ray and Bishop Daniel Abbott, uh, who are all part of that team. Bishop Gregg, as acting Metropolitan, what a weight off your shoulders that must be. Um, so thank you for being here. And the other uh, bishops of the province as well, Bishop Keith Joseph and Bishop Peter Grice. Um, Archbishop Philip, who's somewhere over there, I am so pleased that you're here. Uh, we don't tend to do handovers particularly well in parishes or dioceses, but I deeply appreciate the fact that you're here, the fact that we're now neighbours, and uh, while there's room for improvement in your coffee-making skills, I know that you're deft, <laughs> deft with a bottle opener and hope I don't wear out my welcome too quickly. Thank you too to the clergy of the diocese who've come out on this very hot day, um, those who have joined us online, and, uh, and all the other clergy and uh, people of this diocese and around the, the country and uh, overseas for prayers and support. Um, I'll need plenty of those in the years ahead. I might invite you to stand.
May the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life she gives. May the Spirit who co-created with Mary when the eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. May the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.